Ah, it's certainly been a day. Well, figured I uh, would take a moment and talk about field capacity real quick. So, number one, for plants. So for plants, you want a soil blend that is nice, light, and fluffy, right? Not dense. Um, you want something that the roots can pass easily through. Um, basically, it's, it's light and fluffy, right? Not smushed. Fungi don't really give a shit, right? Um, because the hyphal tips of a fungus have the pressure of like 10 atmospheres. So they will literally grow through concrete. However, it is better if you have a nice light mixture because that will just make it much, much easier and much, much faster for the fungus to actually branch out. This is why we can use the same kind of soil techniques and same soil mechanics for fungi as we can for normal plants. Shocker. Um, anyways, so water and hydration. So. In here, I've got a bunch of vermiculite, which is an inert substance uh, that helps with uh, moisture control and actually helps lighten the soil. Um, the soil base is cocoa core, which is completely inert. And uh, between those two, I think they have a pH of like seven, six, five, seven. Um, then uh, we add spent coffee grounds because if you don't use spent coffee grounds if you use fresh coffee there's way too much acid in there and your ph will go to like your, the ones the twos um it's really bad um uh, actually kill your fungus anyways so there's spent coffee grounds in here there's vermiculite there's cocoa core then there's some gypsum gypsum is a buffering agent it provides trace min minerals uh and basic like trace nutrients to the fungus but it also helps act as a pH buffering agent. So a buffering agent basically freezes, well, it, it absorbs excess acid, right? And so if you were to say drop a bunch of it inside of something relatively acidic, uh, it would absorb uh, some of the acid and whatever was left, it would be what it could absorb. Uh, and so we add the gypsum to help counterbalance the acidity, number one, of the substrate in the water, because your water is going to have, if, especially if you're using city water, even if you filter it, it's going to have a pretty high pH. It's going to have like, a, uh, depending on where you live, it could easily have, if I need to double check, but it's pretty up there. Or it's super soft, right? It's kind of on either end of the spectrum, depending on what chemicals they're adding. Anyways, that is all to say that a buffering agent helps us uh, kind of neutralize excess acid. However, there is still going to be excess acid, right? We are adding, uh, if you're using pasteurized substrate, you're adding compost, um, that's high in nitrogen, phosphates, uh, so on and so forth. And so that's gonna have a certain acidity level. Then, if you're using worm castings, cow manure, or anything else like that, that's also going to change the pH. So, what we have in here is a bunch of gypsum to help as a buffering agent. Then, we check the pH, right? After we mix everything together, we check the pH. Usually, the pH is on the pretty acidic side, and the reason why is that even spent coffee grounds, worm castings, whatever you're going to use, is going to be extremely acidic, right? And so I think for this uh, batch, the pH uh, came out to 5.0, which is about a point um, too high, right? So uh, it's a log, uh, pH is a logarithmic scale. So uh, basically each point you go is several factors more acidic Right, so the difference between a pH of 6.0 and a pH of 5.0 is vast, it's huge. And we're talking about the fundamental difference between whether or not your fungus is going to have to fight off a bunch of contamination because contaminants like extremely acidic soil, uh, blah, 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 the list goes on. Anyways, then what we do is you check the pH with the digital meter. That came out to saying 5.5, so now, or uh, 
So then what we do is we wanna make this nice, light, and fluffy. We wanna hit field capacity and we wanna balance the pH. So we use a crushed lime which is, you can find it in the garden center of any store. You can go to your local agricultural place. You can also use oyster shells. Um, either one of those, when mixed in, will actually lower the pH. And so my target pH is what, something that's good for, great for fungi. So fungi thrive in a pH of 6.0 to 6.5 or thereabouts. And uh, that's also happen, that also happens to be the pH of most other plants. Uh, so your house plants and everything else, your cannabis plants are going to love that pH. Uh, and you can also add worm castings for additional nutrients, uh, phosphorus, so on and so forth. Anyways, now wetness, field capacity. I'm going to show you what this looks like first. Ugh, awkward as hell. Okay, so... You can see this is nice and light. It doesn't even look wet, right? Let's squeeze it. Right? Kind of kind of like it's been out in the rain, right? It's wet, it's damp, but it's not stuck together, it's not clumping, it falls out of the bucket, falls off my hand, it doesn't stick. Right? Now you're probably wondering, how do you test for field capacity? Well, it's nice, it's light, it's fluffy. And then what you do is this. Squeeze, see that water pouring off? Right, the soil in my hand wasn't dripping. Uh, it actually took a fair amount of force, see? But not too much force, right? That's what field capacity looks like. So uh, if, you're, if you're trying to make your own substrate, master's mix blocks, uh, grains, etc. Field capacity is really the point at which uh, it is hydrated, but it's not dripping, right? And if you squeeze it a little bit, it gives you a little bit of bounce back, um, but it's not gonna pour off, right? So anyways, that's all about the soil work that I did today. Now I have to bag it up and eventually find something to eat and go stare at a wall.